All right. Here's my pattern here. Now I'll put this on my uh, in the gallery area in the album with the neckerchief slide, so you can get the print it off and get a good measurement. It's two inches wide up here and three inches long. All right. Now this is a piece of half inch basswood. All right. You can find this probably down at Hobby Lobby or uh, a craft store. You want to use basswood because it's the best thing to carve because the grain is real uh, close together and the wood is fairly soft. So that's what we want to do. So anyway, transfer your pattern from there to here to your wood and then saw it out. Now you can use a coping saw to cut this out. It's fairly simple to do. Or if your dad has a band saw, uh, you can ask him to watch you, help you cut it out on the band saw. And that's what I'm going to do right now, is go over to my band saw and cut this thing out, okay? We're over here at my bandsaw now. Now I want to cut this out, so I'm going to drop my guide down to where it just clears the wood like that. It's going to get noisy here. You're up, Kevra, and just follow your line. divide it in half like that okay that means with this arrow being a shape basically like a cone and everything going down towards this point here we know that from this middle line everything on this side is going to go this way and everything on this side is going to go that way all right and again remembering our circles up here and the larger circles down here we can begin carving this okay so let me get my glove on and my finger protector if you're wondering why these staples are out here this is what we're going to put in the back of the arrowhead when we're through to put your neckerchief slide through all right Okay, I'm going to use my old trusty knife here. So, remember our grain now. See how this line is curving in towards that? That means here, we can chip off here and not worry about it cutting into this area farther in because everything's going to fall off this way. Now, we can't do it this way because the chip will follow the grain of the wood which is running up and down so that will go into the wood. We want to take our chips off to where they come out of the wood. So we'll just do that real quickly here. See how they're just falling off? And I'll just carve right You won't be able to take off big chips like I am, so don't try it. Take off little chips in the beginning. And by taking these chips off like this, 
it makes the surface of the wood look like it was actually uh, made out of flint because when they take chips off the flint they do it the same exact way because rock also has grain and this would be a represent how the chips would come off a piece of flint rock. I don't want to cut down beyond my outline there, or then your arrow will get out of shape. So we'll cut right down to that, and then stop, and then come back up here and round it out. So now our two lines meet. So now I can cut off my pencil line, and this we're going to bring this down. First of all, let me bring this side down to my cut line. I want both sides to come out exactly the same. See how the wood's falling off? Uh, I can't do that here. See how my knife jerks across there? That's because that blade wants to follow the grain of the wood. So, no one using that principle of the circle. We turn it back around and do it this way, and those wood chips just fall off of there. Like you were in the kitchen buttering your toast. Now, this area up here, remember we were carving down this way, this area up here, which way do we want our chips to come off? This way or that way? Yep, you're right, that way. So we turn it around. Starting to look like an arrowhead? I think so. All right, now, before we do this part up here, we want to indicate our tie lines where the arrowhead is tied to the arrow shaft. We're not showing the shaft, but we still want to show these lines in here, okay? Now, to do that, let's just draw our lines back on here. We're going to go right there. And this is, what we're going to do now is called stop cuts. We go in one way, stop. Come in the other way to meet it. That's a stop cut. So there's my line, so I carve in here to the line, stop. Come in that way, see there? Just take out a notch. Same thing up here, carve down to the line, stop. Go up to the line. Chip comes out. Same thing on this side over here, down to the line, up to the line, down to the line, up to the line. See there? See how that's starting to round out? And we just do that all along there. And as we're doing it, we want to give it sort of a rounded appearance. As we're going along. getting down into a real tight area there, so I'm going to lay that knife down and use this one here, because this blade will get in there.
See, you just take your time. Don't ever try to rush anything. Because if you try to rush it, you're going to have an accident. And we don't want that. start working on this area up here. So, remembering our circles, we're going to start taking this down. I'm just sort of shaping the wood now to get it down to, this, to what I want it to look like. Okay, now here's where the circle principle comes in again. So let's draw our line back across here, straight across. So this is going to tell us that everything we carve on this side of the line is going to go this way. And everything we carve on this side of the line is going to go that way. Alright? So let's just start at that line and start rounding her off. And again, our chips make the same kind of chip as the Indian would have made when he took the flint chips off. All right, we've got our top done. Now we're on to the bottom. You have to be careful here because you don't want to cut down into your other carved areas. So if you just be careful and cut down to your stop line there like that. Same thing on this side over here. So now you can see our line across there where we went that way over here and this way over here. Well, that's pretty evident, so we want to get rid of that. So we're just going to kind of carve that off of there. That way it'll look a lot better. Like that. Okay, now let's just take a look at it. This side over here, see this side, this loop over here sticking out, and this one over here, how far this, this one sticks out farther? Well, let's bring it in to where it's equal to the other one. That way your arrowhead will look a lot better. There, that looks a lot better. Alright, now I'm just going to emphasize my wrap just a little more. Again, this is called a stop cut. Now, 
watch this. See an arrow? This is, this is a perfect arrow here, right here. Well, Indians made beautiful arrows, but they never made them like that. I mean, they weren't after that. So what we want to do here on these edges is we want to make it look like it's been chipped. So, again, remembering, uh, remembering our grain, what I'm going to do now is just start up here at the top and just take out a little chip like that and just work my way down like that. See what that did? See how much better that looks now than this side over here? So we'll do the same thing over here. Start right up there, touch one. Take a little chip out and just go right down the edge of the arrow. And here the same way. This side too. Like that. See there, now it's really starting to look like an arrow. And we can do the same thing up here. make a little groove right down the center of this to make it look like it's been uh, wrapped with a couple strips and wraps of rawhide, okay? on around on this side. Like that. And guess what? We're done. Now, that didn't take long, did it? Didn't take long for me. It's going to take a lot longer for you if you haven't done this before. But as you can see, it's a pretty simple, simple little exercise. Now what we have to do is we have to put the holder on the back of the arrow for our neckerchief slide. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Now these are just staples. You can get them down at Home Depot or Lowe's. 9 16 cable metal staples. Maybe your dad already has them in his workshop. So I'm going to get one out of here. Now this is much too long, but what I'm going to do is right there where I have the marks made, I made the marks just as wide as the staple is, and I'm going to drill a couple little holes just a little bit smaller than this staple, because I don't want that staple coming out of here. So I got me a drill that's smaller than the staple, and I'm going to drill me a couple little holes right through in the exercise. Make sure you don't go all the way through. Just like that, okay? Now if my camera person back there will hand me my big old blue-handled wire cutters, we'll snip this staple off and start getting it down to the size that we want it to get in there. It's amazing. Now things just pop up around there. So anyway, I'm going to start about right there. This may take a couple times to get her, get her just right. Oh! Probably have to get your dad to help you with this part of it, unless you're big and strong. Yep, getting narrow. Now if my cameraman will hand me that other big pair of blue handle pliers back there. I'll have to widen this staple out just a little bit. There we go. Let's see. I'm 
make sure that when I put this together, it's wide enough that my neckerchief is going to go down in there and not be too loose so it falls down off the neckerchief. So I think I'm going to take off just a little bit more. About like that. Now I'm going to put that right there. After I widen it just a hair more, even these up. Just like that. Now I need a hammer. I think I can take my glove off. I don't need my glove anymore. Got me a hammer here. I'm just going to gently tap these down in here. Now I'm going to go get me a neckerchief and I'm going to see if it works. Well, this isn't a regulation cowboy, cowboy, well, it is a regulation cowboy neckerchief, but anyway, it's not a regulation Boy Scout neckerchief, but it, this is the only thing I have down here right now. But this will show you that this thing looks pretty snazzy on there, and that thing's going to look pretty snazzy hanging around your neck, but we're going to make it look even snazzier, okay? So I'm going to take it off here. And the first thing I'm going to do, although this is good and snug in here, I'm going to put some super glue right around each joint to where that goes in there, just to hold it even better. Okay? And make sure you use this uh, extra thin power super glue. You can buy this down at Hobby Lobby too. And just scorch your some in there right around that joint. And it'll just soak in. Okay, soak in there. Don't make me a liar. Went on one side. There it's starting to go. Okay, now to finish this off, what we're going to do is uh, get rid of our little dirt marks there from me pounding on that staple. I'm going to stain this with some stain, which will make it look real spiffy. Now, if you want, you could paint it, but I don't think it really needs to be painted. Just putting some stain on there will make it look really slick, okay? So we'll do that right now. Okay, to finish this thing off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some stain on there. Now, I've got a, some stain here. This is called golden oak. You, your dad probably has some other stain out in the garage somewhere. So I just have my old piece of cloth here, dip that in there, and rub this on here. Coat it on there pretty good to where it soaks in nice. And what this will do is this will emphasize all your chips, which will make it look even better. Like that, we might as well go ahead and stain the back of it. sure you get get your stain on there where it completely covers everything. Don't worry about getting your hands dirty. Okie doke. Put that away. Now we take an old rag here and we'll wipe off the excess stain. Now look at that. Almost looks like it's made out of stone, doesn't it? 
And see here where the end grain shows here on the end, how much darker it is than out here on the front. That's why it looks like it's been chipped. See, because every time you take a chip, you expose a little bit of the end grain and also a little bit of the front of the grain. So it, the end grain is darker than the front of the grain. And that's where you get those chip, chip effects. And I think that looks pretty slick. Now, there's one more thing you have to do. And that is, you have to write your name and your troop on the back here so everybody knows who carved it. And then you wear it. Take that metal thing that the Boy Scouts sell you. And of course, no self-respecting Boy Scout will ever wear one of those things when you can wear one of these things, all right? So anyway, I hope this uh, taught you something, and I hope you get your wood carving merit badge. Good luck.